Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran on this wonderful day. I'd like to thank all of you for being with us. If you're uh, joining us online, now would be a really good time to uh, go to our website, I believe, and uh, download uh, the worship bulletin so you can follow along. Um, we have uh, a TV out. I don't know why. I think Satan is attacking us. There's spiritual warfare electronically going on at Grace Lutheran Church. Um, are the mics all working? Okay, we'd, maybe we're working with the mic so that you, if you're online, you should be able to hear just fine. Other than that, um, you have your worship bulletin. Um, if you can't see the one screen that's working, I recommend you do the old-fashioned thing and just read it off the page like I do. Let us rise and begin our worship in earnest this morning. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our entrance hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today.
in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, Comfort and defend us, gracious Lord. be with you. Also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you make the minds of your faithful to be one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise, that among the many changes of this world our hearts may be fixed where there are true joys are to be found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for our reading. The first reading for the fifth Sunday of Easter is from Acts chapter 8. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south, to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Cadence, 
queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning, seated in his chariot. <clears throat> and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah the prophet and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And he said, How can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shear is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and began with the scripture. He told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, So here is water. What prevents me from being baptized? And he commanded the chariot to stop, and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. And when they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away, and the eunuch saw him no more, and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azustas, and he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns, until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 John chapter 4. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that does not confess Jesus is not from God. This is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you heard was coming, and now is in the world already. Little children, you are from God and have overcome them. For he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are from the world, therefore they speak from the world, and the world listens to them. We are from God. Whoever knows God listens to us. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is from God. And whoever loves has been born of God and knows God. Anyone who does not love does not know God, because God is love. In this, the love of God was made manifest among us, that God sent his only Son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love. Not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Please rise for the hearing of the Holy Gospel. Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine dresser. Every branch of mine that does not bear fruit, he takes away, and every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you, unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me, and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers, and the branches are gathered and thrown into the fire and burned. 
If you abide in me, and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and so prove to be my disciples. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated for our hymn of the day, All Who Believe and Are Baptized. Grace and peace to you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thus far in our Everyone His Witness campaign for Easter, I know this is the first time I've told you that we're doing that, mostly we've just been informative. And I do hope that I have inspired you, or inspired you maybe even just a little. But this week we want to sort of get back down to brass tacks. We want to, we want to, to learn maybe some mechanics of witnessing. And don't worry, I'm not going to give you a script to memorize. I am not going to send you door to door. But we are going to learn something, I hope. And we're going to use for this the acronym LASSIE. Not the TV dog LASSIE, because that's still under copyright and we can't use that. But think of just some other dog named LASSIE. Listen. Ask, seek, share, invite, and encourage. Our first week, our lesson from our first reading works very well. We'll start with Philip. The first two letters of Lassie are L and A. Listen and ask. Ask questions. Listen to their answers. This goes back and forth. We call it a dialogue. The more we listen, the more questions we can ask. The more questions we ask, the more we learn. The more we learn, the more comfortable they get with us, the more comfortable we get with them, and we can learn sort of how to speak to them about Jesus. Now, not everybody lives in the same domain. I don't even know what to call these domains or categories or love languages. But we do know that there are certain kinds of people. There are head people. Head people are thinker peoples. They're talkers. They're philosophizers. They're readers. That doesn't mean they don't do every other thing, but they are more likely to get through to them if you talk with them on a, on a head basis, an intellectual basis. Other people are heart people. Heart people like squishy things. They like smaltzy things. They, they, what's the word for it? They, they feel. They feel, right? They, 
They love puppies and hearts and handwritten notes on lavender-scented vellum cards and things. And to tell you the truth, and by the way, you haven't figured it out, I am not a heart person. These people tend to, uh, they mystify me just a little bit. So if you're a heart person and I offend you somewhere in here, I don't do it on purpose. I just don't understand you. Other people are hands people. Hands people are worker bees. Hands people are busy bees. And for the most part, hands people could care less about what you think. And they could care less about what you feel. They're just ready to get something done. Scripture today, our three scripture lessons, I think talk about all three of these different languages. Head people, as you might realize, refers to people who are more cerebral. That doesn't mean that they are more cerebral. It just means that they think they're more cerebral. It does tend to be a self-fulfilling prophecy. People who like to talk about philosophy, read philosophy, they tend to be pretty good at philosophy. That's not because they're smarter than anybody else. It's just this is what they do with their spare time. So they do it, and they like it, they enjoy it. They like to be intellectual. They like to be philosophical. These are deep thinkers. They're analyzers and synthesizers and formulizers. What drives them is understanding. What drives them are answers. We see this really good in Acts chapter 8 this morning with Philip. Philip is one of the deacons, one of the seven deacons of the early church overseer of the food distribution to the widows. He's not one of the twelve, but boy, this guy has been about the business of the church. The Lord has sent him on the road to Gaza to a desert place, and at the time, Philip didn't know it, but the Lord has sent him so that he might have a divinely appointed appointment. Can I get away with that? A divinely appointed appointment with an Ethiopian. The Ethiopian is sitting in his chariot reading Isaiah chapter 53. Now this scroll that he has bought, Isaiah 53, your personal scroll, maybe he's taking this back to Queen Candace and he used her money for it. And he's like, I'm going to read this before I get home. You'll notice that this is an extraordinarily expensive thing to buy. And he doesn't seem to be able to wait to get home to read it. He just stops on the side of the road because you don't read scrolls and drive. Even the ancient people knew that you don't text and drive, right? So he pulls his chariot over to the side of the road, and he's reading the scroll. And God has sent Philip here. And the Ethiopian's reading, and Philip encounters him, and he runs up to the chariot, and he hears the man reading. Some people are like, why does he hear the man reading? Because in the old days, people used to read out loud. That's the way they did it. This sort of reading in your head is a relative new thing in the world. I mean, by new we're Lutherans. I mean new. I mean like 3,000 years. <laughs> but it's a relatively new thing. When I read, I read really, really slow. I read, I can hear my voice in my head. And if there's an author that I know and I know what they sound like, I can actually hear their voice in my head. I don't read like paragraphs at a time. He's reading this out loud because that's the way people used to read. And he runs up to the chariot and goes, do you understand what you're reading? You, now get this here. He's already listened, and now he asks. He listens and he asks. Now it's not a particularly open-ended question, to tell you the truth, but it, did, it, but it does the trick. It gets the conversation started. It prompts this very important Ethiopian to invite P Philip to come up into his Cadillac SUV, you know, monstrosity of a chariot. These things are really expensive, too. This is an important guy to sit and have a discussion about what he's reading. Further opening the door is the fact that he's reading Isaiah chapter 53. Isaiah chapter 53, this is about the suffering servant. This chapter is Isaiah seeing from afar Jesus Christ crucified for the sins of the world. Woohoo! This is not an accident. This is divinely appointed. And here we have this biblical witness. It's not a monologue. He's not on the side of the road accosting people as they walk by going, Do you know Jesus? And if you don't, you're going to die and go to hell. I'm not saying that doesn't have value. I'm just saying I wouldn't do it. 
It's a two-way street. It's a dialogue. He listens and he asks and he listens and he asks and he listens and he asks and he listens and he asks. We can also see from this account it's a good connection between the two men on a thinking level. Philip asks questions. Do you understand? And he asks for an explanation. Likewise, the question, uh, Philip, this is informational. There's nothing in this text to suggest, to suggest that their dialogue has anything to do with feelings. <laughs> nothing more than. They're not working either. I like to think that Philip explains quite a bit of theology to this man. They're talking for quite some time, and they're talking and they're explaining and listening, explaining and talking. At one point, they come up to a place where there's water, and the Ethiopian looks over at Philip and goes, there's water right here. Maybe I should be baptized. Wow. Doesn't say anything about emotions. But the Ethiopian does go about his way, rejoicing. He gets there. But the primary dominion of their conversation was in their head. Personally, this is my favorite way of doing things. I'm a head guy. I like heads. They're great. For others, for other people, they're not going to work well. For other people, they're going to want hearts. This refers to people who are most comfortable in the feelings department. They like to feel. They don't think so much. <laughs> Again, that's my apologies. That's, oh, why do I do that? It's not a joke. It's not, and I don't, mean to, I don't mean to make fun of anybody. I really don't. I just can't help myself. It is really, and I, this is complete serious, this is, it is really hard to be a heart person in the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod. We are not geared that way. Our greatest question is, what does this mean? I don't think I've ever asked you, how does this make you feel? <laughs> I don't do that. I don't ask you how this makes you feel. I don't even know how I feel half the time. I'm not going to ask you how you feel. When you talk to a heart person about the things of God, they're most likely going to talk to you about their emotional state. They're going to be more attuned with their attitudes. They're going to be more in tune with feelings. And I'm using feelings a lot only because I don't know of any other word to use. But it's feelings, it's emotions, it's attitude. It's all got to be sort of going on with your guts, so to speak, as opposed to your head. Often, many times, they're much more concerned about how other people feel. They're very emotive. They're very feelings for other people. They're much more considerate of other people's feelings. I have a hard time with this. I have a hard time processing my own feelings, much less processing somebody else's feelings. You get a couple of hard people together, they're talking about the feelings of the entire world. I'm like, I don't even know what I'm feeling. And you want to tell me how are other people feeling? Perhaps we can see the heart-oriented person in the disciple that Jesus loved, namely John, from our epistle reading for today, 1 John chapter 4. And John's gospel entirely, to tell you the truth. And you might even make the argument that Revelation itself is extremely emotionally driven. It'll help you understand the book of Revelation, to tell you the truth, if you realize that John is a very emotional guy. He reads, Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God. Whoever does not love does not know God. Because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. That he sent his one and only son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son to become an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God has loved us, we ought to love one another. Beloved. Turn our hearts unto God, turn our feelings unto God, turn our emotions unto God. Now, by the way, the head-oriented person is like, oh, are we talking about love again? Let's go to Romans 8, Ephesians 1, something not so mushy. Finally, we come to hands people. Now, hands people have heads, they can think, and I've been told that they also have feelings. But the bottom line, they're usually about getting things done. Accomplishing something worthwhile. 
Hands people are mission people. They're mission-minded. They're action-oriented. Hands people, by the way, hands people will go on a mission trip to the Dominican Republic even though they don't believe in God. You tell them, hey, we're going to go on a mission trip and we're going to do poor th- we'll do great works for poor people in a foreign country. And they're like, I'm all in. Who's this God you're talking about? <laughs> well, I don't believe in that, but I'll go anyway. It sounds like good work to me. Now, that's not to mean that they can't involve themselves in a heady discussion. That doesn't mean that they don't have hearts that feel. Many times, hand people are driven by their hearts, which they've buried very deep. (laughs) And they let out ever so often with working for people who are in need. Sometimes their brains are what push them into action. I believe we can see this illustrated in our gospel reading for today. If there was ever a person, if there was ever a person on this planet who had a really good balance of head, heart, and hands, it's Jesus. When it's all said and done, there's always a lot more said than done. Jesus said a lot, but he did a lot. And he did it because he loved us. It's hard to get things done. Especially when you got a couple of head people sitting around writing manuals and a couple of heart people wringing their, wringing their hands going, how's this going to make everybody feel? It's hard to be a hands person when you got heads and hearts running around. Hang in there. Bear with them. Jesus very much was aware of his reason for being. He was very aware of the mission that had been sent for him to accomplish. His father had given him a vitally, vitally important mission to to, to do. And speaking of that saving work through suffering and death and the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus says, I have a baptism with which to be baptized with, and how great is my distress until it is accomplished. Again, we can see the illustration in today's readings. Jesus describes himself as the true vine. He describes himself as the true branches. He points not simply to to ourselves. He doesn't point us to other people, but he points us to be close to him. As I am the vine and you are the branches, Jesus wants us to hang out with him, but he also wants us to bear fruit. Remain in me and I remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The downside with the hand people is sometimes they're they're so involved in getting things done, they forget why they're doing it. God is even willing to do whatever is necessary to achieve optimal production. And every branch that does not bear fruit, he prunes so that it will bear even more fruit. We can say a lot more. Nobody lives in just one of these categories. Some people are hands and hearts. Other people are heads and hands. Some are heads and hearts. It's not a perfect system. It's just an illustration to try to get you to think as you're talking with your friends and your neighbors and your loved ones and the people that you really care about when you listen to what they have to say to ask good questions and then think about these things. What might speak to them about the work of Jesus in the world? We, we live in different categories at different times in our lives. We're, we're not monoliths. The categories play around a little bit. I mean, you look at book clubs. There's a lot of different kind of book clubs. My book club, pastor's book club, hardcore thinking book club. We pick hard books. We read them for months on a time. And we'll read chapter by chapter, sometimes line by line, talking about what does this mean mean at this church the ladies also have a book club and i'm not convinced you even have to read that book to to be i've thought about doing that and unfortunately some of them are here today i was going to do that at one point i was just to read the back cover and the last chapter and just go hey i read the book and this is how i felt about it (laughs) done give me the mugu by guy pan (laughs) my my point here is There's not one is not better or worse than the other. I have preferences, you have preferences, but we're not making value statements about one or the other. Our point is, as you witness, 
as you talk to your family and friends about the, the massive work that God has done for us? What might they be interested in, in being in? Worship's not always going to be your first step. I know we like to think, you know, invite people to worship. Sometimes that's not your first step. Our worship tends to be very heady. There's almost no hands to it, and there's some heart stuff to it, but it's, it's mostly head stuff. You know, would your friend rather pull limbs or pull at heartstrings? Would they feel better writing a note, a heartfelt note? Would they feel better writing a sonnet? Would they feel better writing a technical manual? In our announcements page, you'll notice that we try to categorize all of our events. And sometimes there's more than one event, but these are, these are you see the little Lego guy, the little Lego face? That's, that's a head event. We talked about putting a little brain there, but we thought that was kind of gross. But that little Lego face, that's a, you know, that's, that's, that's a heady thing. If you've got a heady friend that you're not going to invite him to something, and you don't think that worship's maybe their first thing, maybe that heady thing, or the heart thing, or the hand thing. I think the heart and the hands are pretty yours. I just like our little Lego. By the way, we're not using the, uh, the Lego that is covered by copyright, <laughs> Disney. This, this is just a regular round head with a little thing on top of it. Just nothing to see here. May we look in our communications as we ask and as we receive and as we learn what people might be able to use to connect them to the love of Jesus effectively, that we might share Christ as powerfully as we can in the language that they can understand. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us rise. Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Almighty God, with the whole creation, we praise you for your gift of life and the world that sustains us and all the living. Grant that seeing your even greater gift of deliverance from the disfigurement of sin and the promise of the renewal of your original design, all people may come to repentance and faith in your glorious invitation through Jesus Christ, risen and victorious over death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give power to your word as it is proclaimed boldly by your church, filled with the Holy Spirit and the faithful witness of all as it is preached and taught by all who are ordained and commissioned by you, as well as those to whom you have given the gifts of to be faithful witnesses of your salvation and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Turn the hearts of all who bear the authority of government in our land 
and around the world that they serve and lead all people in the ways of justice, peace, and freedom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. To all who suffer of sickness or injury, give the comfort of your healing. And to all who suffer any persecution for standing for the truth of the Christian faith, give strength to endure. To all, increase faith and faithfulness, believing that the risen Christ leads us to the glory of eternal life in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all the faithful who have gone before us, for the prophets and the apostles, for the saints and the martyrs, especially for your servant Stephen, we all give you thanks and ask for your strengthening us to walk according to our example throughout all of our days, to the glory of your holy name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commit all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, holy Lord. Almighty Father, everlasting God, and most especially, we're bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and John and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sins and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in, our own in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast and the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory and honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. The same way after supper he took the cup, he blessed this, and he gave it to them to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, 
which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Amen. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and drink, you lead us to remember and to confess your holy cross and passion, your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
let us pray. <clears throat> we give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith towards you, or in fervent love towards one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our closing hymn, Let Us Ever Walk With Jesus. Uh, just a couple of announcements for you. There's more announcements I'm going to talk about. I want to read them all. Uh, there's a new Life Flight series going on at 1030 in the choir room on Tuesdays that says talk about signing up or calling people. You don't have to sign up. You don't have to call anybody. Just show up. I got plenty of books. I ordered twice as many books as I need, apparently. So if you'd like to come, just show up. It'll be great. Tuesday, 1030. Um, also, uh, take us out to the ball game. Uh, Grace is doing a River Dogs trip uh, on Sunday. Uh, we're playing the Eastwood Ducks. <laughs> Down Eastwood Ducks. Um, all right, so we're going to play them here, but at the River Dogs Stadium. Uh, Karen is uh, doing all that. If you're interested in going, uh, see Karen. Tickets are $11. The game's at 5.05, probably be down there about 4. Uh, this is 
This is not any specific group's event. We're sort of thinking family ministry. So it's like a slash education, youth, young adults, but older adults. If you want to go, we'd like to have you come with us, okay? Uh, oh, and many thanks to everybody who helped with the yard sale. It was a huge yard sale. Uh, made $4,600. We've never made that much, so it's a banner year for the yard sale. You helped. We uh, thank you so very much for the help. With that being said, go in peace and serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.